All of this new growth makes me so happy. As soon as I started walking down the path of working with indigenous foods, that is when I really found something in myself. And to come out of such a difficult and traumatic marriage and going through divorce, and then to find this very strong indigenous Andina identity was just so powerful. Four Directions cuisine is interpretive indigenous cuisine uh, because I, I'm not getting any traditional knowledge from elders, you know, from you know, people in my family because I am adopted. The things that I try to do in Four Directions cuisine is to source locally and I try to source indigenously as well. Yeah, so this is, uh, this is what I like to call my indigenous pantry. You know, I keep my pepitas and amaranth, quinoa, I have a little bit of cane sugar, chia seeds. I'm going to independent farmers' locations or they're coming and doing drop-offs for me. Even if the product isn't pre-colonial, um, like my olive oil, the company I use is Yoko Dehe Wintan Nation owned. You know, that's where the check goes to. I like working with different indigenous ingredients because then I can tell an indigenous story with the food that I prepare for guests. For me, as long as I am respecting and honoring our culture and my ancestry and my roots, I'm, I'm okay with being innovative and I don't, I don't pretend or advertise myself or my business to be authentic or 100% pre-colonial because I'm not. Where I'm from and where I grew up are two very, very different answers. I'm originally from Caracas, Venezuela. My parents uh, adopted me from an orphanage there. Where I grew up was middle of nowhere, Ohio, in the northeast corner. I was in farm country for sure. When I was younger, I identified much more as Latina or Chicana. Identifying more heavily as an indigenous person didn't come until I was in my late 20s probably. I think I was just blissfully unaware. Education when it comes to the indigenous culture is severely lacking, especially back then, but still now, unfortunately. I don't even think there was a full chapter when I got to that point in history class. Everything about Thanksgiving was the story about this beautiful meal between the pilgrims and the Indians. No mention of how the forced removal was actually a form of genocide. No mention of Indian boarding schools where indigenous children were being torn away from their families. Certainly no mention that in the Declaration of Independence we're referred to as merciless Indian savages. I mean, to be a high school kid and to be learning these things and nobody taught me any differently. The older I got and the more I got information myself and made friends and different relationships with other indigenous people, that's when the information hit a little bit harder, like, oh, oh yeah, they're not they're not teaching reality <laughs> by any 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 means of the word. And the more research I did, the more I realized, oh, I keep gravitating toward being an Andean. Maybe I should follow that. <laughs> I do have PTSD. I have it from my first marriage. You don't sleep like everybody else, whether it be nightmares or restlessness or anxiety, whatever it is. And I found food and cooking in general, especially the, the indigenous and, and pre-colonial foods, as really powerful medicine. Sometimes you come out of a trigger and it's easy to resort to junk food, but I found that cooking vegetables, working with fruits, ancient grains, nourished my body in a certain way that ended up helping to nourish my mind. I've had to uh, kind of research my own culture and learn a lot of things and ceremonial things and um, intents and purposes and medicines and foraging and stuff like that. And that's just such a, such a fun and incredible self-discovery journey. Oh, 
Oh, good morning, Pachamama. You look gorgeous as always. Pachamama is Mother Nature. Pachamama is the ultimate mom for a reason. Sometimes you just have to let nature take care of you. You know, you travel all over the United States and, you know, you see Thai restaurants, Mexican restaurants, Chinese restaurants. But what you don't see in the United States of America is a Native American restaurant. You don't see a Hopi restaurant. You don't see an Oneida restaurant. You don't see an Andean restaurant. I started my catering company in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Originally it was great, but I wasn't growing. So I moved to Denver in March of 2017. You know, my divorce was finalized. I was mourning the end of that relationship. I threw what I could in my outback, put the dog in, in the outback, and you know, two days later, I was in Colorado. <laughs> I, was, I was in a new apartment and a sleeping bag on the floor with my dog and starting a new job and starting a new life. I just, I made my own reset button. <laughs> and it's working out really well. <laughs> Foraging for me gets me back to basics. Um, you know, in the culinary world, there are so many, there are just so many techniques, so many different types of food, so many things that are at our fingertips. And foraging just grounds me again and reminds me that things don't have to be overdone. You know, part of harvesting responsibly is listening to the plants, knowing uh, if there's enough in a little family or a little colony. You always give an offering. You take something from Pachamama and give something back. The mountains call, for sure. I, I take one look at the mountains and I, I get a smile on my face. It doesn't matter how long I've lived here. Um, every time I see the mountains, I just, I get a smile. And um, even today, you know, I you know looked out there and I thanked Pachamama for being here. I thanked the gods, thank the ancestors for giving me enough knowledge and guidance and trust to, you know, figure this beautiful, crazy life out for myself. <laughs>